Hi everyone, Dr. Frankie Bishon here, and it's Thursday, and I'm going to cover a really awesome topic today that I think many of you single folks can really relate to, um, and it's about dating apps. They are tough, and we are struggling collectively to successfully navigate the dating app terrain. So I'm going to chat about that today. But before I jump into today's material, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. It looks like I'm approaching 13,000 followers and um, subscribers. So thank you, thank you, thank you to those of you who have subscribed and continue to share what I put out there and post and comment. Um, I love all of your comments and your encouragement. And I love to be able to respond and answer great questions. And no question is a silly or stupid or dumb question. So if you're thinking you have a question, I am certain that many other people have the same question. So don't be afraid, post it, share, and I will do my best to respond. For those of you that don't know who I am, or you just recently found me, somehow I popped up in your feed. Um, I am a clinical psychologist, a board certified sex therapist, and I've been practicing for over two decades. And I'm also a matchmaker who is the CEO of Little Gay Book Matchmaking and Little Black Book Matchmaking. So if you are queer, sorry, my cat is roaming all around. Um, if you are queer and you are interested in putting yourself out there, Get onto my website, littlegaybook.com, and fill out a free profile. We search and interview and screen all types of individuals who are looking for a relationship um, on a regular basis for our matchmaking clients. So get in there. And then if you are heterosexual and you're interested in putting yourself out there and the dating apps are, you know, not just like a lot of us are struggling with them, but there's other ways to put yourself out there. And another way is on a matchmaking um, website where um, your information is totally confidential and the only people that view it or browse it are trusted people from my team that I um, that I hire and I screen and who are very much, um, who have a lot of experience and um, love helping people find love. So with all that said, get on those sites, fill out um, a profile and check me out on social media, Dr. Frankie Bashan. I've got Instagram and Facebook and TikTok, and let's just jump into today's material. How to actually get dates on dating apps. Yes, how? How do we make these things work for us? Many of us have caved on using dating apps in the last five or so years, frustrated with the lack of connections we're finding in the real world. We may be frustrated to find we're having a hard time there too. It feels like we don't get any matches or not the ones we really want. Or once we do, no one even talks to each other. So like, what's the secret? Well, there's no magic formula and we can't control others' actions or decisions to match with us or not. There's a lot you can do to make your dating app experience as effective and successful as possible. And I'm going to share where to start right now. Decide what you want. If you've been on dating apps for longer than five minutes, you've seen some variations on the phrase, I'm not even sure what I'm looking for, or don't know what I expect from this. If you do nothing else differently in your approach to dating apps, make sure you don't do this. Making intentional decisions about romance and dating is hard. Figuring out what we want and what that would be look like in a relationship is a lifelong project. You don't need to have the entire rest of your life planned out or know what you want to buy your future partner for an anniversary gift. But if you can't name what you're looking for in a dating context, then you also can't have any realistic expectation of getting it. And even if your absolute dream person matched with you, if you have no idea at all about what you want to happen with them and we're hoping that a relationship would somehow develop with no input from you, then you'd be out of luck anyway. Are you looking for a serious relationship? Even a marriage? Are you looking to hook up or are you looking to casually date? Are you non-monogamous or polyamorous and hoping to find another or new partner? If so, how would they fit into your life and current relationship? It's okay to be open to more than one possibility. For instance, maybe you're looking for a fun summer fling, but are open to it being more serious if it feels right. But your dates need to know what they can expect to be on the table with you. 
make sure your profile has the information that really matters. What you're looking for is arguably the most important thing you can include in a dating profile. But there's a lot of other information that makes a huge difference in how people think about your dating app presence. Imagine you're on a job hunt. You want to find a career you feel solid in and can stay in for years, maybe even forever. But right now, you're at the stage of sending out dozens of applications to dozens of jobs and maybe interviewing with a few of them. You find two job postings in your field that seem promising at a glance when you look at, the, at first sight. It has a detailed breakdown of job responsibilities, expected time commitment, salary range, what qualities the committee is prioritizing in applicants, an explanation of company benefits and PTO policies, and when you can expect to hear back from them with a response. The second job just says, we're looking for rock stars who are ready to commit to an exciting opportunity with a team that works hard and plays hard. Which one are you gonna be applying to? The latter example is functionally what you're doing when you create a dating profile that's just two or three similar selfies and a bio that says something like, not sure what I'm looking for on here. I'm just a fun and laid back person who likes music and spending time with friends. Well, it may feel like you're being rejected or are unappealing when you don't get matches with a profile like this. The reality is likely that people aren't finding anything in your profile that they can actually connect with because it's so general and vague. They have no way of knowing if you're someone they'd like to go on a date with or not, because they know nothing about you at all. Certainly nothing pertinent to know you are as a partner, right? To know how you are as a partner. Here are some things to consider, including in a dating app profile instead. What you're hoping to get out of dating, what you're looking for in a partner, in a relationship, Photos that show your life and personality with your friends, your pet, playing your favorite sports or doing your favorite hobbies. If you don't have any, take some, go find some. How you spend your time outside of work, qualities that you think make you a good partner or a date, like loyal, funny, a good communicator, currently in therapy, anything important about your sexual dynamics. For instance, if you're a stone top, or you're looking for a BDSM relationship. Important values that you need someone to be on the same page with, that's also something to consider. How you want a relationship to fit into your life, what would look like a, a successful relationship to you, what you're looking for in a partner, anything you need a potential partner to be on board with in terms of family or lifestyle, a question or a prompt or an invitation to share something to start the conversation, if you do match. That may seem like a lot, but in reality, it just adds up to a short but very effective paragraph. For instance, I'm a triple Capricorn and power bottom looking for a long-term relationship. Ideally, you're a kinky top. Even better if you can cook, I'll wash the dishes. When I'm not at work, I'm usually in my vegetable garden looking for vintage furniture on Facebook Marketplace, or hanging out with my dog. I'd love to meet someone who wants to spend Sunday mornings at the dog park with us. I don't have kids, I don't drink, but I'm fine, but fine with me if you do on both counts. I'm fat and I'm not planning on losing weight, so if that's a problem for you, we probably shouldn't date. Direct communication and supporting BLM are non-negotiables for me. I prefer monogamous relationships, but I'm open to dating someone non-monogamous. Tell me about the last book you read. There's no guarantee that the person in the above imaginary example will get tons of matches or match with the people that they want to actually date. But at least they can be confident that if someone doesn't connect with them, it's because they evaluated that they genuinely weren't compatible or weren't looking for the same things not because their profile was so vague, they didn't even engage with it. Choose to be active, not passive. The theme of much of this is related. You have to take charge and be intentional about the experience. This is counter to what some of us hope for when it comes to dating apps. Dating is already so hard and exhausting. An app and the algorithms that comprise it should take all the legwork out of it. So we can just create a quick bio and then watch the relationships just roll on in, shouldn't it? 
you likely know what I'm going to say. This is not how dating apps work, unfortunately, or really anything in life. Dating apps can only ever be a microcosm of dating itself. And so just like any other area of dating, your quality of life in dating is directly proportional to how much effort and intentionality you put into it. I wish I had, you know, different news for you all, but I'm sure none of this is surprising. What does this mean in practical terms on the apps? It means most literally that you should commit to actually messaging people. Matching doesn't really do anything but boost your ego unless someone actually tries to make a date. It's ideal to message something specific about the other person's profile so they can tell that you've actually paid attention to them personally and ask a question of some kind to get a real conversation going. If that seems too challenging though, just saying, hi, how are you, is better than nothing. Taking an active role also means bringing intentionality to the app conversation and first date if you have one. And this could mean having personal guidelines about chatting. Maybe you know you don't like chatting endlessly and want to make a date in person within 24 hours. Or maybe you need to chat for a while to build trust. And so you know you want X number of exchanges before making a date. Specific green flags you're looking for in the conversation. That they ask personal questions about you. That they're funny. That they answer promptly. Questions you know you want to ask to determine if your baseline compatible. Any personal boundaries about sending photos, exchanging real phone numbers, overtly like sexual language, things of that nature. Most of all, it's important to be active in checking in with yourself about that core question. What do you want and how is this person stacking up relative to it? Are you having fun and feeling a growing connection or just getting swept up in the momentum because it's the easiest option? Does this person align with the green flags you've decided you're looking for? Or do they just give the same toxic chemical rush as your ex? And you aren't actually compatible in ways that really matter. They aren't easy questions, but they're the ones that will help make sure your dating app journey is heading to the destination you're actually looking for. Thank you all for tuning in. And if you were moved by anything I shared today, or I suggested, or you think somebody out there that you care, love, um, is struggling and might benefit from um, some of what I shared today, please share it with them. And if you have any reactions or comments, please post and I will do my best to respond. And I hope to see you all next Thursday. And thanks so much for all of your support. And uh, take care. Hugs.